In this video, I will talk about the coding question that came in TCS and QT of 14th of May shift 1. This shift was very very easy as compared to the rest of the shifts. The recent was also very easy but it this shift is more easier than the last shift. Okay and the disclaimer is this question I have tried my level best to get exact question and I feel these questions are pretty exact as per the NQT exam but if you found that there are few missing things that I need to print it please let me know in the comments so that everyone would be aware of but if it is uh, like this all question will definitely give you the taste of or the flavor of the question that has been asked in TCS and QT so you don't need to worry because same concept would be applied it would be a slight variation in the output but the question would be same Great, so let's move forward with our first question. So hello everyone, my name is Aditya Mishra and you are watching Time Coding. If you are preparing for TCS and QT, on-campus placement, on off-campus placement or any other types of placement preparation, I put the content which will help you in your placement preparations. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss any of the updates. Now, let's move forward with the very first question. This question directly came from my one uh, short array video, one short array video. The similar kind of question I have taught in this one short video, it is of two hours. It would be a uh, must watch if you are preparing for this exam. Great. Not only this exam, any of the service based exam because this this uh, video has covered all type of array patterns that can be asked in from you if the exam is of service based. Now the question states, you are given an integer array nums. The unique element of the array are the elements that appear exactly once in the array which means you need to calculate the sum of the elements which is occurring only one throughout the array. Great. So as you can see here we have uh, it should be 2. We have 1, 2, 3, 2. Great. So what would be the input like as you can see the input would be in the two case. In this case I have taken the space separated input and in another case it would be a comma separated uh, values so you don't need to worry if it is like you just need to put something into the input statement and you are good to go and if still you are not able to know how to take this types of input because in the other case in the worst case they can give you the input as this case then it can create an issue for this also I have created a dedicated video on how to take input in TCS and QT great so this would this video link would be in the description or you can find it over my channel this can help you to crack or ace this exam great so yes now as you can see 1 2 3 hasn't given input to us now what I need to do is I need to eliminate all the uh, duplicate value which is 2 and 2 so return the sum of the unique value so unique value will be 1 and 3 so 1 plus 3 will give you 4 and as you can see the result is 4 and in the explanation also it is written that 1 comma 3 and the sum is 4 guys in the exam the explanation won't be there only the input test case and the output should be there now in this case I have just written for you know you to know what is actually there but exam you will find the test case would be 1 3 2 4 this would be the format in your exam so don't be worry about and it might be they can give you the length in the beginning you just need to trim your array according to that in the previous shift I have covered this extensively please have a watch over it because I have solved each and every shift extensively and pretty good off level I have covered all the optimal cases of each and every question so you it has a must watch if you want to clear the interviews also great so now you can see in the second example 11111 now 111 one, one, all is a duplicated element duplicate element so you don't need to calculate any sum from them so sum would be zero so how you can do it so for doing this question there are multiple ways so this question can be done using many ways but i will tell you the optimal one so that we, we will not waste time and will come to on point so basically i will use map here i will store each and every element and their occurrence together so in this case the one two and three we have three elements so one is occurring how many times one is occurring one times two is occurring two times and three is occurring one times so what i will do after creating this map i will see which element is repeating only once so i will iterate over this map and check whose values is one and I, when i will got the key value whose values is one i just need to add it and create find the sum of, of it so firstly it would be one then plus three then it 
would be four. So how I can do that is let's move forward with the code snippet. I will discuss in this video as Python, CPP and Java. All this code snippet would be provided in the description. Please have a look over it. Great. Now, as I have said, nums equivalent to list of input, it will take the space separated inputs. Great. But if in the case, in the question, it states that it would be one comma two comma three comma two as these values are comma separated then uh, instead of int you need to do a string and put in split you just need to put a comma it would split it and create an array for you and while iterating over it just you need to write one line like you need to type cast it so it would be num equivalent to uh, int of array of i or nums of i anything so that the string value would be converted into the integer value and you are good to go but in this case as i have took the example of integer case so you don't need to write this much great i have covered this type of concept extensively in the rest of the shifts i will recommend you to watch it if you are preparing for this exam now uh, nums will take all the space separated values into it and we are processing uh, creating our dictionary the dictionary would be created storing the answer which will store the sum of unique elements now i am iterating over d dot keys and i will if i found that d of i is equivalent to one then please append that key value into my answer you can write it in any manner also for like you can write key value in uh, d dot items it will also work if the value is equivalent to one please add answer plus equivalent to key it will also work Okay, you just need to write the if condition here and this for loop will also work. So the thing is, what is the time complexity and the space complexity Aditya? Time complexity is one because you are iterating over the array once and the space complexity is order of n because I am creating a map in which I am storing each and every element and their occurrence. And in the last, I am just printing my answer and your solution is done and dusted. So without wasting time, let's discuss the CPP code. It is the same logic, but in this case, what I have did is I have didn't consider the length. It might be the question states like three, then one, uh, two, then three, then two, uh, it, it, not three, it would be four. So in the previous shift, what happened was is the first element would be the size of the given array. And you just need to trim out the very first element and consider only rest of the elements, uh, leaving the very first element. Okay. So this case I have covered in the recent video shifts. Now, in this case, I didn't took the n or also they have not given the n. So you need to do like this. Just take the input as a string format, use string stream so that you can pass over the string, create an int num and uh, just iterate over the string stream input, put each and every number into the nums array and you're good to go to perform your logic, create a map, then put everything into the map in the last uh, answer equivalent to zero it and if the second you found that the occurrence is only once then please add the first value into the answer and please return that answer okay so i hope you got this solution it is also very similar to the python no difference similar to the java also taking the input creating uh taking the input of string by splitting it if it is comma separated put comma in between and you are good to go then uh the string dot length would be the length of the nums we have created that putting all the elements into the nums, uh, initialized my map dat uh, data structure as well as uh, just performing or filling my map with all the values present in the nums and in the last just checking whose occurrence is one, please find the sum of it. So answer plus key will find the unique sum of the element which is repeating only once in the array. Great. And in the last, you just need to print. Guys, there is an issue here. I have got people's feedback that you need to do print or I guess print ln also, but he said that please use print because print ln will print one line at the end also. So it can give you the error. So if print ln is not working, please write print. So now let's move to the very next question. Guys, I hope, I hope this videos will definitely help you to crack this TCS. NQT. So what about the interviews? Guys, for interviews, I have created a one guided or dedicated re with resources of interviews, how you can crack the digital or ninja role very easily. So everything, the link would be provided in the description or you can see over the screen of that particular thumbnail, which you need to check on my channel. It is a guided path. It will definitely help you to crack the interview. Great. Now, given an integer array nums, 
okay find the sub array with the largest sum guys this question has been asked by multiple companies such as microsoft amazon and many more man companies mostly many companies have asked this question you can find it over the lead code now you need to do is find the largest sum and return its sum as this input might be variate if you have given this exam please let me know the input, input format but i think this would be the case where the negative number is also given to you and the positive number is also given to you so how you can find the solution so it states that the nums would be in the question in the nqt you won't find this nums and output there only the given uh, input array and the output how you look like the, there will be no explanation but the question would be very big uh, in that the explanation would be given great now 4 minus 1 2 1 would be the array which give us the largest sum and how we can see here like i have written all these array elements here now 4 minus 1 would be 3 uh, and 3 plus 2 would be 5 and 5 plus 1 would be 6 so this will give me the this will give me the maximum uh, sum of sub array great so sub array means it's a contiguous element which is present in an array great so till now i hope you have cleared this question it's a very easy question if you know particular for loops and how to store max and all so how you can approach it guys for solving this question there are multiple ways let me discuss the very brute force approach is you can start a loop like for i equivalent to 0 to n and for uh, j equivalent to i plus 1 to n and for every iteration you need to do the sum equal to 0 and sum plus equals to array of i so that the i element which you are pointing on would be added into the sum and the sum plus equals to array of j so that each and every time the wherever the j is pointing you can accumulate the sum into the s variable and in the last you just need to do is max sum please store the max of yourself and the sum that you have uh, computed so far so the max sum you need to initialize in the very beginning great so this would be the code of the brute force but the time complexity would be order of n square which is a very high time complexity and the space complexity would be order of one this approach won't be accepted because this is a second question they accept you to write an optimal solution of it so how you can write the optimal solution so i am here to tell you about the optimal solution now what i can do is I will create an max sum array which will store the maximum sum has been occurred or encountered by us while traversing over the array or the sum which is generated from the sub array which is maximum great so initially we'll initialize at zero and what I will do I will create an curse sum variable great now I will iterate over my array fine so firstly I would be minus two okay so first case I can see is if my cur sum it becomes less than zero at any time i will reinitialize my cur sum to zero because negative value won't do anything for us because zero would be the largest value compared to the negative so i will convert it into the negative so firstly it would be minus two so minus two is less than zero i will convert it as zero and there would be no change in maximum now one comes into the picture now zero plus one i will add one into it now one is greater than maximum at every time at every iteration i will compare my curve sum with the max sum so one is greater than my max sum yes so i will write it one here simple what i am telling you like how i am explaining it same thing i will write into the code so this is the magic of understanding the quotient thoroughly great so minus three now i came to minus three now minus three plus one will give me minus two so minus two is less than zero so what i will do i will reinitialize as zero and i will move forward and if you think that Aditya, the question was to find the sub array which is giving me the maximum sum. Guys, I'm doing the same. So till here, this is a sub array which will not give me the maximum sum. So as I'm iterating over it, I'm just storing my maximum element. Just see, just see how we can get the maximum sub array. Now till now we have zero. Now we'll come here four. So zero becomes four. Now I will see, oh, my curve sum becomes greater than max sum. Please append uh, reinitialize my maximum so maximum is being reinitialized with 4 now it comes to my minus 1 so 4 minus 1 would be 3 so there would be no changes because maximum is still greater than current sum now moving forward to the twos now it becomes 5 yes now maximum is greater than uh, maximum is less than 
cut some you need to reinitialize your maxim i did the same now we come to the one and we got six which is greater than maxim so you need to reinitialize it and bingo guys this particular sub array is giving you the six and rest of the like six minus five would be one one is still less than maxim and uh, five also is less than maximum. So this sub array will give you the result that you are looking for. In this question, you don't need to print the maximum sub array, which is giving you the sum. Great. If that's the case, you just need to have a two pointer that like sliding window approach will say it. You will find multiple templates over the net. You just need to apply in this question. But as this question state you to find the maximum sum you can uh, find out from any sub array and the sub array should be the contiguous manner so yes guys the first step what i did is i have traverse over my given array traverse on given array great now we have did two parts in it if uh like uh let me let me write clearly i will accumulate some at every point great till now i hope you agree with me and in this i will check for the two condition if my current sum becomes less than zero please reinitialize my cur sum to zero okay at any time i find my max sum is less than the cur sum please reinitialize my max sum to cur sum or the max between both of them so this is the code that I will write into my uh, favorite programming language, whatever you have. In this video, I will cover all three languages. Now, firstly, I will check, check for Python. Guys, in this case, I'm considering it. The input would be in the space separated format. Now, uh, nums will take the input of the space separated values as an integer format. I am considering max element here as the very first element of the array. Now, current sum has become zero. Now, at every point, I will try to commute my compute my current sum so current sum would be added in the very first beginning now current sum would if any time i found that the current sum is greater than max sum please please reinitialize my max sum by comparing both of them and storing the max according to them now now if my any time i face my current sum becomes less than zero then you need to reinitialize your current sum and the last you just need to print the max sum. i hope you got this whatever i spoke just now i've written into the code so let's discuss the C++ code. So C++ code also doing the same that we have that I have explained just now is taking the input as a string because we don't have the input uh, length. So we need to take it as a string. So now get line will take the input of a string in a one line string stream to just pass over the string, create a num, creating my num array, performing the operation like max sum. Now add now cur sum will accumulate all the sums of the element present in the nums. Now if any time I found that my cur sum become greater than the max sum, I will store the max bit among them. And in the last, if my current sum is less than zero and my cur sum, then I will cur create my cur sum becomes zero. And in the last max sum I will print. Okay, guys, beware of this end L. If after writing the whole code and still you are getting error please try to modify few few things into your codes until your code being accepted because i have seen many people who have doing trial and error over their code snippets and in the last they have submitted the code so please be aware of that now moving forward with the java code same thing if you have understood a c++ code the java would be cakewalk for you similarly now i have taken the input creating my num array according to the size of the uh, string now filling my nums Initializing my max sum, which will store an answer. Current sum, which will accumulate all the sums that we are encountering into our input array. Now, current sum will store the sum that we are just seeing every time. Now, current sum anytime becomes greater than max sum, please store the max among them. And if anytime my current sum becomes less than zero, please store the uh, please reinitialize my current sum to zero because it's of no use. Great. Now, need to print it into the compiler but be aware of ln if your print ln is not working please try print it will work so yes guys this is from my side if you are want to prepare for interview please have a look over my interview video that i have put in it takes me much time because i have gone through multiple interview experiences as well as if you have any doubts you want any guidance resume review resume tips please let me know in the comments or you can reach out to me in my linkedin 
or uh, Instagram or anywhere, I would be happy to help you. So yes, guys, we'll meet you with a great content soon.